Hello and welcome to part 2 of my tutorial where I show you how to wrap things in plastic where in part 1 we have created this setup where we are using shrink wrap modifier and we can control the amount of wrapping on our object with this slider and in part 2 instead of using the shrink wrap modifier I want to use a cloth simulation which is not gonna give us the exact same result but something more close to reality and sort of simulation of what would happen if we just vacuum packed an object into plastic and just suck the air out of it. For those of you who haven't watched the first video, I strongly recommend to do so. But if you haven't, you shouldn't have a problem of following this one. But then you should be able to set up this scene by yourself because we won't go over the first steps such as importing the mesh and setting up the scene. So with all that out of the way, let's start the tutorial by basically deleting all of the modifiers that we have in our plastic wrap object, which should give you this very basic capsule shape ready to be simulated. But before we do that, we need to select the object that we want to wrap the things around. In my case, it's the dragon and go into the physics tab and enable collision because that is going to be our collision object. Here you can leave the default setting as it is, we won't touch them in this video. And now we can select the capsule, the plastic wrap, and right under collision we can click on cloth to add a physics cloth modifier. And here we will spend quite some time with those settings, adjusting them, and I will try to explain what those do so that you can maybe achieve other results and overall be more familiar with what this do. We won't be going over too much in detail into everything, but it should give you a solid base, sort of a foundation for your future experience experiments. So first of all we can simply click play and see what happens and as you can see this blob just falls down and sort of hangs onto our object which is great but you can see for example here we have this weird result where this edge just sticks out right here and that is because the plastic wrap just doesn't have enough vertices. If we go into the edit mode we can see that it's not dense enough to be precisely calculated onto the object. So let's fix that first. When you go out of the edit mode you can have some errors such as this one but simply go to the first frame of the animation and that should fix it. Now with the plastic wrap selected go into the modifiers tab and add a subdivision surface modifier. Now it's very important that this subdivision is right before the cloth so that first we are adding the vertices and then the simulation takes place. Now we can hit play to see what it does and first of all it obviously makes our computer run a little bit slower because it has to calculate more vertices but also it now more accurately interacts with the object and we can make it even more accurate by increasing the levels in viewport to 2 so we have the exact same result as later we will have in the render. You can see that everything is messed up again because we changed it while the simulation was running so let's go back to the first frame we will do this quite a lot because that's the nature of the simulation whenever you change some input data then you have to run the simulation again now if we do that you can see that the simulation runs much slower and also quite counterintuitively we have more vertices but now we have another problem which is the object is popping through the plastic foil and also it's sagging on the bottom which is due to the gravity that is enabled in our physics simulation relation. So in order to fix that, we will go to the physics tab again and first of all scroll all the way down to field weights and then turn off the gravity all the way to zero. If we restart the simulations, you can see that now the sphere basically doesn't do anything because there is no gravity force that would push it down and also no other force that would interact with it, which is perfect for what we want to achieve. So now all we have to do is suck the air out of this plastic wrap and make it stick to our object. For that, we'll go a little bit higher and we enable pressure and we set the pressure to, let's say, minus two. Now what will happen is when you start the simulation, you can see that the plastic wrap immediately gets pulled inside towards the object and that is just very chaotic as you could see and it just produces so many problems for our mesh. And also if you look from the top you can see that even though it's supposed to suck the air out it still like bloats on the side and well in short it's just not what we're looking for. And in order to fix that we need to make the pressure act basically like it would do in real life because it's supposed to be the physics simulation. So in real life you wouldn't just jump from the pressure 0 to minus 2 
but it would be a gradual process. So first of all, I will make my animation just 120 frames because I don't want to spend too much on baking and simulating all those frames. 120 seems totally fine. And now with my animation on the first frame, I want to keyframe the pressure zero. So I simply hover over this value and click I, which is gonna add the keyframe. And then I move the animation to the last frame. I change the value to something like minus 10. You can adjust that later if you want stronger results, but I found minus 10 works great. And again, with the mouse hovering over, click I to add another keyframe on the last frame of the animation. Now, if we start the simulation, you can see that it gradually is shrinking and wrapping around our object, more like it would do in the real life as well. We can also see that we have those areas on top and the bottom where this material is just being pushed closer together here as well and when we look from the top we don't have these bloated parts anymore and everything looks more or less physically accurate and so as you can see we already arrived at a result that is i would say acceptable and all we have to do right now is just polish it to make it look better so the first problem you will notice if you go into the viewport shading and see the model in the solid mode you can see we have those parts of the model where the plastic wrap just intersects with each other and is just you know cutting through uh, its own geometry and that is because right now the plastic only collides with the object but not with itself so in order to change that we need to go down and open the collisions now in collisions we have to enable self collisions and maybe change the friction to one so that on a self contact the wrap will not try to stick to each other but rather slide which should give you better results but feel free to experiment with this value however you want now the second thing is the quality which is basically how many iterations of the collision should be done and basically the bigger the number the more accurate the collisions will be but also don't go too crazy because it can slow down your performance quite a bit i will bump it to something like 12 and then restart my collision to see what the changes are actually doing so we can see that it's slowing down significantly already but also because of the increased quality of the collisions we no longer have popping of our object through the material but let's wait for the full bake to see the final result in acceptable frame per second so once the simulation is done we can preview it and you can see that it already gives us really great result and let me just mention that it all runs on ev right now so this is still not the best it can do because if we switch to cycles then obviously the material the plastic material is gonna be much much better looking than it is right now so yeah i'm pretty satisfied with the results so far we can see that it's nicely sticking to the object and when there is too much of the plastic then it just sticks to each other and sort of removes all the air in between so now one thing you may notice is that in some places like here where the plastic is crumbled you have those really sharp edges and even though our object is set to shade smooth we can still see those really sharp corners that also ruin our shading on the model and in order to fix that and that will yet again put another load on your performance we will go to the modifier tab and then add another subdivision modifier and this time we want to keep it after the cloth simulation now one thing you may notice is that with this subdivision at the end enabled some of the mesh may stick out of the plastic wrap and that is because the subdivision the geometry as well so in in order to fix that there's actually a few ways to do that depending on what you're willing to compromise one would be to increase this first subdivision so that we have a more dense mesh in the first place to run the simulation but that's gonna be very heavy and it's gonna take a lot of time for you to bake all the frames in your animation but also arguably it's gonna give you the best results now the second thing is in the physics properties if we go down to the collisions we can slightly increase the distance of the object collision which is gonna sort of offset our plastic from the object that it's colliding with so if we set it instead of 0 0.015 to something like 0 0.03 and then try to run the simulation again we can even stop it here you can see that now the mesh stops a little bit further from the collider so feel free to adjust that as you wish and now the last thing is on very top and that is the stiffness tab as you can see we have this tension and compression values here which basically controls how this material resists the tension and compression and if we set it to something like one and this is the value that i just found through sheer trial and error so feel free to use this one or look for your own that's gonna work for you better i just found that this gives me the best result and another thing is the vertex mass which intuitively you would probably want to set to as little as possible but i found that something between one and two kilograms i know it sounds ridiculous when we are talking about the plastic wrap but 
but this value simply gives me the best result. You can see when we are running the simulation, then the plastic acts more like plastic than before when it was set to 0.3. But yeah, again, feel free to experiment because when it comes to simulation, that's honestly the most important part. So just tweaking the values and looking for results that work for you best. And now, as you can see, because we're using this capsule shape, we always have this distinctive pattern of this poles on top and the bottom being squashed like so and some of you may not like it but this is very much mesh dependent so depending on the initial shape and more specifically the geometry that your plastic wrap has at the beginning the results will look one way or the other so for example if we create a cube for example just scale it up put it around our mesh so that it covers everything basically let's go into the shading mode isolate the mesh with shift and h and then we can give it a little bit more subdivisions like so to have more even geometry or rather distribution of geometry on the mesh yeah that's not too bad and then we can add a subdivision modifier to it as well to give it more resolution overall we can apply that you can see we have some vertices here it's quite dense right now but then as we click alt h which is gonna get out of the isolation mode and just make everything visible in our scene we can go to the render preview and then let's take it aside so that we can see what we're doing with the cube selected we can shift select the plastic wrap that we have right now and simply copy modifiers which is gonna basically apply all the modifiers from the sphere to our cube and also let's go to the material tab and choose the same plastic material that we're using for the plastic wrap i'm showing you this just to illustrate what different results you will get while using different geometry and shape as the plastic wrap so we can get rid of this one so now the only thing that we didn't copy from the original plastic wrap is the keyframes on the pressure so again on first keyframe zero set keyframe last keyframe is gonna be minus 10 and again add a keyframe and if we simulate this now you can see that it's gonna take way longer because i just gave it way more geometry to this object so let me just talk about it later when the simulation finishes so as you can see now because we're using different shape let's also shade this smooth and also a different geometry different distributions of vertices our simulation gives us much different result than before and maybe i went too far with subdividing that cube before so let me just pause it so that i don't have such a laggy viewport but you can see that the results that we're getting is much much different so i feel like this way of wrapping things into plastic relies way more on creativity and honestly i would really love to see what you come up with so when you decide to do something out of this i would love to see that on my twitter feel free to tag me the link to my twitter is in the video description and yes that would conclude the second part of my tutorial now again of course you can switch to cycles and have the really nice results with the emission lightning just like we did before but because i went over this topic in the last video i'm not gonna repeat myself again and yeah i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you learned something that you didn't know before and the today's word for the sentence creation for anyone that wants to play this i don't think there is many of you because i haven't seen any to be honest but for this video it's cube so release your creativity see you down in the comments and bye bye